Hello and welcome to this video on how to carve a Halloween pumpkin. By the end of the video you'll have all the info needed to carve pumpkins like these ones I did last year. Here are the tools that you'll need. A pumpkin carving tool, a seed scoop and a clay loop. Right, we're getting started. You firstly need to cut a lid to get into the pumpkin. You can mark a line using a pencil or a pen, and as you get around the back, be sure to make a tooth slash key. This is so you can easily locate the lid into the correct orientation, and it also helps keep it locked in place. This is a very basic lid that I'm cutting, but you can make it as fancy as you like or even going through the base of the pumpkin. Arguably the most important tool in a pumpkin carver's toolbox are the carving blades themselves. And I don't think you can get much better than these pro carving tools by zombie pumpkins. Each one comes with six carbon steel blades, of which there are three heavy duty ones for tasks such as cutting the lid, and three fine tooth blades for carving those intricate patterns. I highly recommend you get yourself one of these tools, they're sturdy and will last you for years. Now that you have the lid off, you can see all the pumpkin seeds, strings and flesh that need to be removed. It's time to get messy. It's quite fun this part, but be sure to have a bin or a bag to hand to dispose of all these juicy innards. It's about now that uh, if you're carving inside, anyone who isn't carving a pumpkin will begin to complain about the stink. Pumpkin Master's Jacko Ripper now this is a no-nonsense manual pumpkin gutter. Its teeth are serrated to cut through all those annoying strings, and it has a large spoon for scooping out copious amounts of pumpkin gunge. A great tool that I use to gut all my pumpkins, but you will most likely have to import one from the USA. I highly recommend it. The clay loop, this is a clay modelling tool, but I use it for thinning out the walls of the pumpkin. It's officially known as a single-ended squash circle loop tool, or as most people call it, a pear-shaped loop. It tears strips of pumpkin flesh off at a time, so you have to be careful not to get too overzealous with it, otherwise you'll ruin your pumpkin. For the ideal carve, it's recommended that the walls of the pumpkin are no thicker than one inch. This will make carving easier and ensure you get a good glow from your pumpkin. So this is a job for the clay loop, but as I said earlier, be careful as it can tear off thick strips of pumpkin at a time, and if you go too thin, your pumpkin could collapse in on itself whilst carving. I've done it myself and it's never fun. Now, before you get carving, you're going to need a carving pattern. And two of my favourite places to get them are orangeandblackpumpkins.com and zombiepumpkins.com. Both sites 
have a whole range of awesome patterns that are crammed full of detail and instantly recognisable characters. From movie monsters to video games, there is a huge selection available, so please check them out. There will be a link in the description below. There are a number of ways to transfer the pattern. One of the best ways of tackling this job is to buy some Saral transfer paper, preferably in blue or any colour that will contrast nicely to the pumpkin. Once you've trimmed down the pattern, you need to cut the transfer paper to about the same size. Align the pattern with the transfer paper, making sure that the powdery side of the transfer paper is facing the pumpkin. Fix in place with some tape and you may have to fold or cut slits in the pattern to help it form to the shape of the pumpkin. But once it's secure, simply trace around the pattern using a ballpoint pen or a pencil. Now to carve the pattern, you need to swap over to the fine toothed detail saw. I'm checking the thickness of the pumpkin wall to see if it's thin enough for carving. As you can see, I'm pushing the blade through various shapes that are going to be carved out and removed. Check the blade for the length it takes to poke through to the other side. Be careful not to stab yourself. It's best to do this at various locations on the pattern to check for a uniform wall thickness. The bottom of the pumpkin tends to be the thickest, so some extra thinning may be required. Again, be careful not to take the walls too thin. Aim for about an inch. Now that you have your chosen pattern on the pumpkin, it's time to get carving. Generally, you want to start in the centre of a design, working on smaller pieces first and working your way outwards. If you have some big pieces to cut out, leave these until last as it will help maintain the structural integrity of the pumpkin whilst carving. Try to keep the carving blade at a right angle to the pumpkin surface and carve with a sawing motion. The more you saw, the easier the blade will cut through the pumpkin. Just follow the lines with a gentle pressure pushing the blade through the pumpkin. Don't force it. Once you've finished carving, remove all the shapes you've cut out. If some bits won't move, Take your carving knife and cut where there seems to be some resistance. Uh, take great care not to damage your carving. Now that all the carving is done, it's a good idea to take your pumpkin to the sink and rinse the carved area. 
This will help tidy up your carving lines by removing those little bits of pumpkin flesh, as well as rehydrate your pumpkin if you spent a while carving. Now all that's left is to wait for it to get dark so you can admire your masterpiece. I'd recommend lighting it with an LED rather than a candle. It's safer and it won't cook your pumpkin like a candle will, meaning you can enjoy admiring your handiwork for longer. So that's it, I hope you all found this video of some use and I, I hope you all have a terrifyingly good Halloween. Oh sir! Just one more thing.